I made a computer simulation of capitalism and you'll never guess what happens. Actually, you'll never guess. Hi everyone, Colin R. Turner here again. Welcome to Verse of Ice. Um, I've got a really exciting thing for you this week. Um, I've been working on this amazing software program called NetLogo. It's free, go and download it if you want. It's an agent-based modeling software program, which means that you can create complex things like societies and interactions between lots of different agents. I've made my own little simulation here now. So I'm going to just run you through how this works. It's essentially a model of how free trade economy works and what happens when you leave things as they are. Okay, so I just want to run down through this here. Each of this line here is a set of agents. In this case, we have a hundred in the population. I found that regardless of what number in the population, you always have the same sort of result. Um, everyone starts with the same amount of capital. The capital is measured in two ways. It's measured in wealth and energy. Wealth is obviously money and energy is in the work and effort you put into something and also the value you receive in terms of quality of life, etc. So everyone starts off with the same. Um, then everyone is assigned a randomly attributed skill level. Okay, so we can set that from a minimum to a maximum. Um, I've done this really quite conservatively, conservatively, and I set it to a maximum skill level of two, which essentially means that you, you have the ability to make twice as much money as you need to live. And so every, anyone with a skill level of one uh, has to work all their time just to make money to live. So they can make enough money to live, etc. cetera. Um, everyone in this world is self-employed, okay? So everyone is trading with other agents here. They, these are called agents. And uh, so you can set the amount of customers. In this case, we have a population of 100. So I've set the number of customers to 10. So everyone always interacts with the same number of customers, but randomly uh, allocated each time. Um, safety net, I'll tell you a little bit about later. And this thing is, this is where we track um, what actually we're looking here on the chart. For example, if we're tracking wealth at the moment. You'll see now in a minute that uh, the richer people go up and the poorer people go down to the bottom, which appropriately enough. And, and we can set this up. And I will just show you briefly. Uh, for example, if I set everyone's skill level to one, that means literally everyone has exactly the same opportunity in this world. No one has any advantage at all. And if we just run that, you'll see that pretty much everyone just hovers around the middle. So everyone just stays around this average baseline. And the only variance then between some going higher and some going lower will be purely random function because obviously it's completely, the customers are set completely at random each time. I'll uh, reset it and run it again. You'll see the same thing happens, even though the result is different every time because it's um, random, randomly associated. It's, uh, it always gives pretty much the same result. So there you go, running it a third time. Again, everyone is more or less around the middle. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to set the skill levels up to 1.5. Uh, it goes up to a maximum of two, which is really conservative because obviously some people in this world make like many, many times more money than others. So I'm just saying that the, the most talented person in this world can make twice as much money as the lowest person, which of course is being really, really conservative. And um, so if I set that there to 1.5, which is uh, the median area, um, you'll also notice here down here that the total, the total amount of money in the world is always the same. So everyone started out with 50, there's a hundred in the population, so the total is is 5,000. And now as we see, you'll watch down here, you'll see that the, the top 10% of the, the, the wealthiest, um, their share of the wealth is tracked and the bottom 90% of the least wealthy are there which is tracked. So when I run this, pretty much as you'd expect, the ones with the greater skills are going up and the ones with the lesser skills are going down. For example, 1.5 is our maximum here. And here's the, our first red guy. He has a skill level of 1.5. And these guys down here, you have a 1.05, 1.01. These guys are going down to the bottom. Now, I must hasten to add that 
when I talk about skill levels, I'm not talking about intelligence. I'm not talking about charm, good looks. What I'm talking about is just your raw ability to either make money and to bring value to society. Okay, so it's not it's not a statement on whether it's good or bad. This guy could be a, a criminal, or he could be a fantastic entrepreneur, or he could be a philanthropist, or whatever. We're not talking about what's good or bad here. We're just saying that some people are better at making money than others, which is a perfectly reasonable thing to to say. Okay, so as we keep it running, you'll see obviously that there's a, it's a good spread between the 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 people who are the different uh, skills but of course eventually you'll see that these guys at the top just keep getting bigger they the, because they're stuck they're not going off the screen but they're instead they're just getting larger and larger and larger and the guys at the bottom are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and when you run that for a while and I'm just going to speed it up a little when you run that for a while well, the first thing that surprised me was that actually the the middle area just gets completely wiped out. Like, and these are like, I suppose the middle classes would be one way of putting it. These guys just get completely obliterated. And then after a while, you'll see that some of these wealthier guys at the top, they start dropping out because they didn't have as much money wealth as the others. Now you have to remember that the only difference in opportunity between these guys at the top and these guys at the bottom is their skill level that I set at the beginning. Having more money or having more wealth doesn't make it easier for them to, to make money, even though in the real world, it, we know it does. You know, you can pay, pay for advertising and consultants and uh, better products, etc. But these guys don't, they don't even have that. They just basically have that skill set which is worth more than the guys at the bottom. And so, so you keep running that. And over time, you'll just see the guys getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and uh, more of them dropping out. So you look down the bottom here now, we'll see uh, the, the top 10 wealthiest people in this world. They now own 70% of all the wealth, and the bottom 90% own uh, 30% of the wealth. So you can see that the wealth has been completely uh, distributed in favoring the wealthy. Again, this is randomly signed. I'm resetting it there now. And um, I'll just run it again and you'll see the same thing happens every time. More, more and more people are going down to the bottom and the guys, the, the wealthier ties getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And these guys dropping down. So I've run this plenty of times. I've run it for a long time. I've run it to, to see, and always the same thing happens. And it's pretty much expected because it's kind of, it's a mathematical certainty. But just a word on how the actual transfer of energy and wealth actually works here. For example, in this, in this model, there are, you have 10 customers for each, um, for each time you sell. So if you have a skill level of two, for example, then you're selling a share of that skill to 10 customers. They would each pay one tenth of that, which would be 0.2. They would pay you 0.2 um, units of wealth for your skill. And in turn, they gain 0.2 units of energy because it's improving their life that much. So they're paying 0.2 in wealth and they're gaining 0.2 in energy. And also to make things fair, like I say, this model is really, really quite conservative. I also made it that when you're selling your energy, it only ever costs you one unit of energy. So whether your unit of energy is worth one or whether it's worth two, you always spend one unit of energy creating that product for other people. So everyone spends the same amount of energy and the only difference is that they can make, some can make more money from that energy than others. So the other thing I wanted to try was, um, because obviously in this model, people who have no money, they basically fall to the bottom. They're basically dead or forgotten about. So I said, well, okay, that's possibly true, but it's not very realistic in most uh, modern developed countries. So I added a, a safety net feature, which basically means that if I set that now, you'll see this red line is the safety net. And what that means is that as you get poorer and poorer, if you cross this uh, safety net, or if you come close to the safety net, um, the system will automatically give you a free wealth credit. And it will tax all the other agents in the world with that credit. So as I say, oh, the same amount of money always stays in the world. So let's run that. 
And we see pretty much the same thing. It's unfolding as before. Then these guys, when they hit the safety net, they don't go any lower. And what you'll notice pretty uh, straight away is pretty much exactly the same thing is happening, except the guys at the top aren't quite as big as they were before. So they're because they're being taxed on all these guys who are hitting the thing, it's um, it's distributing the wealth much more evenly. Now you'll see that the top 10% share of the wealth is held by, in this case, 35%, and the bottom 90% is 65% by and large. And of course, if you leave it there like that, eventually the same thing happens as before. You've just moved it up from zero to whatever you set the safety net at here. So essentially, it, the same thing happens, just a little bit slower. But now there's a really interesting thing happens when you look at the energy transfer instead of the wealth transfer. And this kind of shocked me when I saw it first. Um, as I said, with the, with the wealth, the transactions here, as you know, the, the richer go up and the poorer go down. But when you track the energy, watch what happens. Everyone is going up. Everyone is rising to the top. And this is amazing because some people are um, extracting more energy than others, or some people are have the, have the capacity to give more energy than others. And what's happening is, is that the net, the net gain of the, all the population is increasing over the entire population. Look, I run it again, the very same thing happens. And this kind of tells us two things very interesting, I think. One, it tells us why capitalism is such a successful system. It's why people stick with it, because it does improve lives. You know, it's, it's even in this really, really conservative model that I've created here, it does actually improve the, the value and the quality of people's lives even though it's, uh, it also creates poverty and extreme wealth, we tend to turn a blind eye to that because our lives are being improved by it. And uh, that's really eye-opening. And the second thing that I think that for me is eye-opening, it shows what we could be like if we didn't use money, if we never tracked wealth in the same the way that we do. This could be us. We could be all be in the ascendancy with no one getting left behind, with life improving exponentially to everyone. That's what I talk about in an open access economy. People providing value for other people with no expectation of wealth. And when they do that, the overall energy and life quality of all the participants in that population improves. Anyway, I hope you found this really instructive, as I have. For me, it was such an eye-opener to see the difference between the transfer of wealth and the transfer of energy. And I think it's something that we really could, uh, we should be looking at and trying to explore, well, how do we move away from the wealth transfer model to the energy transfer model, which is what I talk about in the open access economy. Um, I've made the source code of this model available um, below. There's a link below the description. You can download the net logo uh, source code. You can also uh, play with an online interactive version of this on the Open Access Economy website, um, and that link is below as well. And uh, you can go in there and tinker around with all these settings and um, and see if you can find the same result or other surprising results that uh, that I might not have found. Um, so that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to my my new website, I'm selling up a new website now for this channel. It's called versavice.tv. If you sign up to the mailing list, you'll get lots of extra stuff and whatnots, and videos and extra content that I'm planning to do in the future. And um, also like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, blah, blah, blah. And uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, that's always greatly appreciated. Uh, Patreon.com slash Colin R. Turner. I'm going to see you guys next week. I'm going to play around just a little bit more and I uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, talk to you soon. Ciao.